Good morning, everyone. This is Addis News Hour, wishing you a bright and prosperous Happy New Year. The Ethiopian government is going to establish an independent National Council of Economic Advisors. The establishment of the Council is meant to ensure successful implementation of the ambition and comprehensive reform program recently unveiled by the government to address macroeconomic imbalance and sustainable growth. According to statement of the Prime Minister's Office, the Council will offer an independent, objective and evidence-based economic policy advice to the government of Ethiopia. The establishment of the Council will further improve the quality and transparency of economic policy-making process, which in turn leads to designing and implementing participatory, informed and effective economic policies. The Council is expected to have about 15 members of high calibre, members who are independent and provide evidence-based economic policy advice to the government on a regular basis. Ministry of Foreign Affairs Gedduan Dargacho held talks yesterday with Edward Solisa Makaya, Ambassador of South Africa to Ethiopia. Gadu highlighted the long-standing multi-faced cooperation between Ethiopia and South Africa, noting the existing fertile condition for collaboration, investment, trade, tourism and other economic arenas. The foreign minister has also brought to the forefront the issue of Ethiopians residing in South Africa and explained the importance of ascertaining their dignity, safety and reasonable working and living environment as well it would be mutually advantageous to do so. The South African ambassador for his part emphasized the need to strengthen bilateral relations, especially at the political level. The Environment, Forest and Climate Change Commission says creating pollution-free environments and ensuring sustainable green surrounding is the responsibility for everyone. This was disclosed at a consultative forum of horticulture producers and leather industry association held in Bishof Town. Shifar Raulak, I'll take it from here. The waste management and disposal systems of Ethiopia's tanneries and floriculture industries don't meet standards. And this is negatively impacting the environment and communities, as evidenced by researches conducted on the issues. The Environment, Forest and Climate Change Commission says it is closely monitoring the situation and is playing share to arrest the situation. As part of the effort, the Commission held a consultative discussion with different flower growers and those from the Leather Industry Association. They say the Commission needs to embolden its support. <laughs> There are new technologies that are being implemented in Ethiopia, such as the wetland system. It is effective in treating liquid wastes on farms. However, we have not locally standardized the system just yet in keeping with the realities on the ground. The Commission needs to work on such areas in collaboration with others. It's been a long time ago since we heard that a joint sewage treatment plant would be established. The Commission should play part for the inclusion of factories into a common treatment plant, which will also assist the monitor and follow-up work. The Commission, meanwhile, says it is working on addressing loopholes faced in the sectors. It is also called on every actor to protect the environment from pollution. <laughs> Communities obviously get benefited from the development undertakings going on around them. However, they will also have to bear the brunt of development-induced problems. The owners of the private manufacturing industries must lay out self-governing environmental protection mechanisms and abide by them. On the other hand, the individuals charged with monitoring and executing them are expected to take all the corrective measures without compromise or conditions and as per the procedures put in place. The consultative forum featured various studies on creating sustainably green environment in Ethiopia. Fighting corrupt practices is said critical to improve health sector efficiency in Ethiopia. Actors in the sector urge the government to pay attention to malpractices of health professionals for a better health service delivery. This came in a sensitization. Sorry for the...
problem. This came in a sensitization workshop on promoting adherence to professional ethics here in Addis Ababa. Salamun Danyi reports. Widespread corruption in developing nations caused severe national crises. The health sector is one of the many sectors susceptible for corruption. In countries with more corruption, one can notice more health problems among people. But the practice is really in Ethiopia's health sector. A forum has been organized to deal with a matter involving different stakes. Speaking on the forum, Deputy Commissioner of the Federal Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, Atakilti Gdei, calls for collaborative efforts to deter corruption in the health sector. <laughs> Corruption in the health sector has a direct impact on an individual's life. It may claim lives when practiced by health professionals. So if we agree on its impact, we need to discuss the matter and cooperate to fight against it. Fighting corruption starts from within. We should make sure that we abstain from any corrupt practice. We will then have the courage to fight others in it. Vice President of the Ethiopian Health Professionals Association, Brahanu Naga, for his part, said corrupt practices have been observed in different health institutions in Ethiopia. Uh, based on our finding, uh, most of the health-related uh, ethics violations that we saw is related to negligence. Negligence can be reflected with either not respecting the autonomy of the patient or trying to practice something which is not beneficiary for the patient or probably indulging in malpractice related to, 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 to the patient's treatment or probably violating the, the normal judgment or the normal routine rule of the land, like practicing out of his profession or his domain of practice. So these are the areas where we usually look, in, look into. He also pointed out that lack of proper attention from the government is exacerbating the situation. The government needs to address this in serious because, you know, a lot of complaints are coming now and then. If you happen to see with our result, people are complaining. And the issues that are present in the Federal Ethics Committee is alarmingly increasing. So, you know, the government has to, has to design a system on how to handle this kind of medical malpractice and ethical issues. Fighting corruption nationwide is also said to be vital to reduce the impact on the health sector. This is at this news hour. Currently, close to 50 public universities are operating across the country. However, conflicts happening in some of these universities are posing threats to peace of the nation. Therefore, Juma University has held a consultative workshop with representatives of science and higher education ministry and other pertinent stakes on ways of sustaining the peaceful teaching learning process in the university. The discussion highlighted the importance of strong chain among the community of the university to solve conflict as timely. Dr. Jamal Apafita, president of the university, said there needs to be understanding and identifying problems to give attainable solutions. The president indicated additional discussion platforms will be provided with the university's community to different levels to avoid the hurdles. The Warrilahi District Culture and Tourism Office in the state of Tigray said the Hanzat Historical Palace is not properly utilized. This includes improper research and conservation activities. That to curb the problem, the office has targeted constructing a museum to collect the tourism heritage. Abtama Shagri has more. Mabrahatu Arara was born and grown in Hunzat village at Wereleh district in the state of Tigray. She has found clay pots with various gold ornaments. She indicated the people have been finding ornaments, including gold, in the village, especially during rainy season. I found gold when the rain comes. In the previous times, we used it as ornaments, but now we lost it due to conservation problem. Now we understand the use of the ornaments, thus we are collecting all we can. I collect these gold ornaments in this area. Sometimes we sell it, 
We get clay materials as well as other projects. Other residents told ETV that they have found different mattress when they are practicing farming activities. We found these materials when we were constructing our houses. We are not conserving it properly. As a result, they are broken. We found these materials in rainy season. We are keeping them after some individuals advised us to do so. In this area, it is possible to find over 160 erected and fallen stairs. It is also witnessed that some alphabet are marked on the stairs. Some seven meter long stairs are seen fallen in the area. According to some mysiological narratives, this place is connected to ancient Aksumat kingdom. Firstly, the stairs and the comments that we had in this place depict there was a place here. In addition, the ancient and historical Garamta Gabriel monastery that connects this place with the Aksum civilization is another indication. We have only such information about this place. The Wara Ila district is not properly promoting these cultural and historical places as tourism destinations. As district office, we need to do two things. Firstly, we are to increase localities' awareness about this place. Secondly, we need to undertake some activities to keep door-to-door -door cultural heritage in this area. We are pursuing some activities to keep heritage since last year. The Warola district has targeted to construct a museum to collect tourism materials in one place, but it is unable to undertake qualitative research owing capacity problem. Ethiopia has been in a milestone of political and economic reform during the year 2019. The nation has also seen the eruption of new conflicts while it has successfully reinstated millions of internally displaced people to their homes. Sintayo Thamrat has a brief review of the year. It was on September 10, 2019 that the nation witnessed one of the saddest days of the year. On that day, the chief of staff, Sarah Mokonen, was assassinated at his residence in Addis Ababa, while three top leaders of the Amhara state were assassinated in Bardar as they were taking part in meeting. Meanwhile, the government has managed to reinstate over two million internally displaced people in different parts of the country. However, major unrest and ethnic conflicts were seen in Aramia and South Stades, which took the lives of about 100 people. Ethiopia has played a key role in efforts to restore and maintain peace and stamp out terrorism in the Horn of Africa. The nation's leader, Abiy Ahmed, won the 2019 Nobel Peace Prize Award. President Salwar Gazode received Forbes 100 Most Influential Women of 2019 title. Ethiopia has also made a great stride in the global diplomatic arena that a number of leaders from the U.S., Europe, Asia, and Arab countries have visited Addis Ababa, renewed agreements, and signed new ones. As part of its reform program, the Electoral Board has been conducting consultation with political parties on a number of issues, although no conclusive agreement has so far been reached. The board remains confident of holding the upcoming 2020 general election. The 28-year-old Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front, EPRDF, merged into a new party called Prosperity Party by including the neglected sister parties. However, one of the co-founders of EPRDF, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, has opted to oppose the dissolution of the EPRDF into the Prosperity Party. Ethiopia sent into space its first remote sensing satellite in collaboration with China. In the economic front, Ethiopia has come up with a promising progress of its reform agenda. The country has already been finalizing preparations to privatize four of its economic sectors, including the telecom, where the government will accordingly have 51% share. In line with this, the IMF, World Bank, and other development partners and governments have made grants and loans to back up the reform efforts of the country, particularly its homegrown economic reform. Several governments and international organizations have provided loans and grants to support Ethiopia's endeavors of democratization, infrastructure development, innovation and technology, use job creation and entrepreneurship, balancing export trade deficit, and minimizing internal debt, among other areas. On 10 March 2019, Ethiopian aircraft Boeing 737 MAX 8 crashed as it was flying to Nairobi. None of the 157 people on board survived. Network of Ethiopian Women Associations, NIWA says media, political parties, as well as other concerns need to work for increased engagement of women in Ethiopian politics. Director of NIWA, Saba Gabramahedin, told ETV that the institution is undertaking various initiatives to promote women empowerment and participation.
I can say Neo has been doing a lot of things, especially also addressing the women at the grassroots level uh, through our women organizations by supporting these organizations in finance so that they can go and work and support, for example, defend women from gender-based violence and support women in saving and uh, credit uh, programs, uh, providing alternative basic education, providing housing programs, and so on and so on. And moreover, as an advocacy organ, I think NEO has been very consistent in terms of its position in defending women's rights issues, whether in good times or uh, in bad times. So. Uh, regarding their political participation, regarding their economic uh, empowerment uh, rights in terms of accessing, for example, economic re resources like land, uh, land issues. She also indicated concerted efforts is necessary to promote gender parity and the role of women in Ethiopian politics. Although the struggle for the inclusion of an article regarding quota of women in political parties in the recently approved new electoral law has gone fruitless. To ensure that at all the levels uh, women are participating, then a lot of actors should be involved, um, like civil society at national level, uh, community-based organizations at, uh, at local level have to be very seriously working on these issues now. I believe what we have is an opportunity, but it's also a challenge uh, because with the change of the political dynamics, having a diverse type of political parties on board and then not knowing uh, how it will turn out uh, is, is an opportunity, but at the same time it's a challenge unless we make sure that each and every step uh, we are involved, uh, that women, not us, but in terms of the women being involved. I think we need to mobilize women from the ground uh, so that they are uh, interested and they, are part they will be participating in the upcoming political issues.